Hello submarine friends. Today I want to make a video about how I make electric actuators made by Lenco. These are trim tab actuators for a boat. So what I do is I take these actuators and I modify them for deep service. So you could take these actuators extremely deep. I built a, a robotic arm for my submarine E3000 and it's rated for 3,000 feet. That arm will work at 3,000 feet with these actuators. I'm sure they will. I haven't tested it, but I'm sure they will. So what I do is I take them apart, I drill some oil passages inside, just so the oil can move all over the place in here. Then I install a, a proper fitting in here for the power and for the oil to move back and forth. What happens is, when the cylinder moves in and out, or rather the rod moves in and out to actuate your part, the volume changes inside the, the actuator. So I have a rubber bladder full of WD-40, which is under pressure from the water, and it just sends oil back and forth inside as the volume inside the actuator changes. So let's take it apart and get started. Okay, so step one is to remove the end cap where the wire goes in. That just pulls off like so. O-ring pops out, don't worry about that. And there's two wires in here. They just plug into the motor. And that's it. So then what I do, I remove two little screws here. And I don't care if I lose them because I'm not going to reuse them. And then you can take the wire right out. And we actually reuse this wire maybe. So that's the first part out. Next, remove the whole housing. Take that ring out. So now what we do is we just wiggle this and it'll come loose. You just have to patiently wiggle it and pull apart at the same time. There it comes and it just slides straight up. Now, the gears can go flying. Trust me, I do it all the time. So what I do is I just take the gears out and I lay them on the bench in order because there is an order to these. One gear is different. Basically, the small gear goes on last. So now, we have to remove this gear here, and there's an Allen screw right here that you have to take out. It's a bit of a bugger. So we'll just put it back in the vise. Okay, so the way that I get this Allen screw out of here is I take a chisel, and I lock it in between one of the posts, and one of the teeth in the gear. And then I take an Allen key with pliers so that I keep it straight. So hold it like that, put the chisel in there. So there we go. It's loose now. And now I can just unscrew this thing and it's out. And this gear lifts out. Set it with the other gears. So now, this guy will slide right out. Now, this actuator is damaged. That's why it's on the shelf. And I'll tell you why it's damaged. I used to put the filling vent in this part of the actuator. So when you fill this thing with oil, the air has to escape. So I put the vent hole here. Bad idea. It works, but what happens when you put your pipe plug in here, if you screw it in too far, it runs into the rod. And that's what happens. It makes a dent in the rod. Now it's useless. I can use it inside the sub somewhere to actuate a valve or whatever, 
but I can't use it underwater anymore. But it works good for demonstration purposes. So, now that we have this all torn apart, we can move on to the next step. So you drill two holes right here, right on an angle, so that they, they go into the main barrel. There's one there, and there's one right there. What those do is they allow the oil to get into that area. Otherwise, the oil has to get past the thread in the rod or past this seal, or I mean this bushing. When you put it together, make sure you have the small gear on top. Then you just wiggle this guy down. It doesn't want to line up. So what you do, just take a pair of pliers, put it on the end of the armature shaft, and while you push down, rotate that back and forth because the, the gears aren't meshing. This is, this is what you want and this is what's happening. So once you get that down, you're set. Now we have to move on to the next stage. Okay, now we have to modify the end cap. And to modify the end cap, what we do is we drill a hole where the electric cable used to go through. It's still gonna go through there. So we're gonna drill a hole appropriately sized or quarter pipe fitting. It's on an angle, so you have to make sure when you drill this, you follow the angle that's existing now. That was it. Then we flip it over. And then we take our tap and we tap this thing. To take a quarter inch pipe fitting. Run the tap in about three quarters of the way down. And that should do it. Okay, the next step, we need a vent hole so that when this thing fills with oil, you can let the air escape. So, like I said, I used to do it right here. Bad idea. If this vent plug is in the way, you can do this. Just be very careful that you don't bottom that plug into the rod. So what I do is I will drill a hole in this corner, being careful not to hit the mounting bracket. And I'm gonna put in a 1 8 pipe plug. So I drill the appropriate size hole. There we have it. So the hole is right here and it's missed the mounting bracket. You can do it on either side, depending on what you're doing with the actuator, you need to put this where it's appropriate so that you can get at it. Okay, so the wires are through the JIC fitting. Again, I would use one of these with fuel line. They're just so much more flexible. Anyways, now we have to put in the ring that stops the o-ring from going too far and we have to put the o-ring on the cap then we plug in the wires they just plug right into the tabs on the motor pretty simple And we put the end cap on. There we are. It can be a pain in the butt to get these end caps back on. And when you put these end cap screws on, you have to back the cap off a little bit. And that's it. Now you can just put a 1 8 pipe plug in the end here as you're filling it with oil. So as you can see, 
pretty easy to modify to send these deep. You can operate these air compensated as well as oil compensated. Do it exactly the same. Instead of putting oil in, just put in air one or two pounds above bottom. One thing to remember, I operate these very slowly with a speed controller because the application is a mechanical arm on the sub. So what I would recommend, if you're going to use these full speed, go to a 3 8 hose, still use a quarter inch uh, fitting to, to screw the barbed fitting into the body here, but use a 3 8 hose just so that you have better air flow, or sorry, oil flow for when the actuator moves in and out. I hope this has been some benefit. Thanks for watching. Ciao.